Hi, my name is Rich McFarland. I am the technical trainer for Field Piece Instruments, and today I'd like to show you a little bit about the S-Man 4. The S-Man 4 has four ports. Now, I only have three ports hooked up. This is for your 3 8 so you can pull a deeper, faster vacuum. It also has four valves instead of the two, so we have the vacuum, of course, and the refrigerant, and then, of course, your low and your high. Uh, uh, the other feature about the S-Man 4 is it is wireless. Really, really nice feature on this. So we're going to go ahead and turn this on and you can see the large display. So it's easily legible. Uh, you can see this regardless of uh, whether you're uh, in a, in a low-lit area or not, but just in case, I do have a backlight that I can go ahead and throw on here. It has the most common refrigerants on, uh, that are listed together. For instance, there's R22 for air conditioning, and then R410A for air conditioning, 134A for refrigeration, and 404A for refrigeration. It does have a lot of other uh, refrigerants listed as well, as I could just go ahead and scroll through. But those are all together so you don't have to scroll through and try to find them. Now today what we're going to do is show you on an R22 system so I'm going to go ahead and leave it right there. The center dial basically is for you to rotate around so we're going to go from we do have this on PSIG, we do have this on superheat and subcool so we've got superheat and subcool then we have T1, T2 to direct that's these so you would put this on your uh, suction line and then this one on your liquid line and you can read those direct. Then we have your uh, vapor um, line saturated temperature and your liquid line saturated temperature. And of course indoor wet bulb and outdoor um, dry bulb. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to sync this up with the accessories that we have here. What I've done is I've taken a um, ET2W wireless transmitter that's there and I've used an ATH4 uh, dual temperature head. Now we're only, only going to use one temperature as we're just going to use this for the outdoor temperature. Okay so basically plug it in real simple to do and then we also have with this as well, a transmitter, uh, the ET2W transmitter, and an ARH5 head. Now, the accessory head on this is an induct psychrometer. All right, so what I'm going to do is show you how to sync the S-MAN 4 to the accessory heads and wireless transmitters. So, we're going to go ahead and turn that light back on so you can see this real easily. In order to get to your dry bulb and wet bulb settings, just hit the round button until you come down. You can see T1, T2, which is of course for these. And then we'll go down to their vapor saturated temperature and liquid line saturated temperature. And then we're going to go ahead and we see IDWB and ODDB. So at this, this is the point where we need to be. And I'm going to go ahead, at this point you'll see the arrows here. I'm going to hit the down arrow and you'll see the IDWB flashing. So I'm going to go ahead to the wet bulb, which would be this right here. We're going to turn the uh, transmitter on, and then we're going to go ahead and turn the accessory head on. And we want this on DC. And at this point, it already shows on here. But if you haven't already synced this up, because that's another point, if you've already synced it, it's always going to be synced. Okay. So in order to sync this up correctly, uh, we're going to go ahead and hit the sync button and hit the sync button on this for a second and you can see that it was hunting and it finally found the temperatures. So we go ahead and see at this point that the ODW, uh, OD dry bulb is, is actually flashing. So we'll do the same to it. Go ahead and turn the transmitter on to DC and then go ahead and put it on T1. You could do T2 with, on this one because I have two hooked up. Now obviously it is it's already been synced up, but we need to I'm going to show you how to resync this. Hit the sync button 
and then hit the sync button on this and you can see that it's been hunting. It will find it and it shows that it is 65 degrees down here with a 57, 58 degree uh, wet bulb temperature. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and wrap things up in here and I'm going to place my thermometer where it needs to be. All right, so I want to show you that the ARH5 accessory head has a really nice wand on it. It does extend to over two feet. Uh, for this particular test, we don't need that, but this is really good if you needed to traverse the ductwork, meaning taking multiple readings across the ductwork and coming up with an average. So we're not, we don't need that in this particular uh, test. Uh, the uh, transmitters on these ET2Ws have a really powerful magnet, very nice, rare, rare earth magnet, very nice. So basically, I'm going to insert this about six inches into the return duct, and I'll just go ahead and mount this on my return duct as well. So that right there will be transmitting to my uh, S-Man 4. Now, what I'm going to use outside, of course, is the ATH4 accessory head on an ET2W transmitter, and that's going to give us our outdoor temperature, and it will also transmit to the um, S-Man 4. Okay, so I went ahead and put my gauges up. I haven't connected them just quite yet. And I'm going to go ahead and put my outdoor thermometer out here. And it's about 43 degrees outside, so I'm going to use this jacket. And I'm going to go ahead at this point to show you that we've got 40 degrees, 41 degrees outdoor temperature. And the indoor dry bulb, or wet bulb, is actually at 50 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and look this up. And then I'm going to put the jacket on. Right now I've got 241, 46, the pressure is going up. This is on a fan cycler. Uh, and my suction line is 51. I'm going to go ahead and put these on the lines. I'll scroll through so you can see that my liquid line temperature is 66, 67, and 32 on my suction line. So we're going to go ahead and put this on. So I've taken this out of the bag. So you can see it pulls out. pretty flat. I'm going to go ahead and put it on. What I'm going to do is just pull this taut and then I'm going to start to draw this closed. Now you can see that this is an irregular shape and this is working quite well. On uh, R22, you want to be between 100 to 145 PSI difference between the low and the high side. And on 410A, you want to be between uh, 160 and 220. It's pretty chilly out here. So I wanted to show you, you can do this in cold weather. So our outdoor temperature right now is 39 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and close this up a little bit more. You can take a look at my pressures now. We're looking at 47 on the vapor line and almost 177 on the uh, liquid line. So, and also take a look, we're at 47 for our indoor wet bulb, so we are communicating with the indoors, and 41 on our outdoor, so we are remotely sensing the temperature for our outdoor temperature. 
and uh, we are within specs between the 100 to 145 psi. I'm going to scroll down through here and show you this. Our superheat is at 15. Doesn't matter, this is TXV and it's pretty darn chilly out here anyway. And our subcooling here right now is uh, 15.9. A little on the high side, this could use a little bit of work. So we'll scroll down a little bit more so you can see that our temperature of our liquid uh, line is 76.6 and our vapor line is 38.9. And you do that one more time, we're looking at our vapor and liquid line saturated temperature. So this is really easy to do, it takes all the guesswork out, you know exactly where you stand and what, what you would need to do to correct any problems or if it's running perfectly fine. So you can do this when it's really cold as it shows right here 41 degrees outside and uh, you can do this on tune-ups or uh, so you can start your tune-up season a little bit earlier and also on maintenance. So you can do this all the way down to 37 uh, degrees. All in all, this is all communicating with everything inside, everything outside, and it's working beautifully.